103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday morning, June 27th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Now, the trick to a long drive is the hips. You got to throw with the hips. That's the secret behind it. Nobody tells you that. How do you get welcome your to the disc golf channel, guys. Yeah, welcome to the disc golf <laughs> channel, guys. I'll give you all the tips. Stay tuned. And our other guests are Scott Williamson from Exploring something. I can't see the rest of it. Exploring epistemology. Exploring, Exploring epistemology. 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 There it is. I shrunk my window down and cut it off. And uh, Dread Pirate Higgs. Oh, hey. And oh, boy. George Brown, two and a half. Hey, George. Oh, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and, uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. Nice. Well, bet what's our topic for today? God speaks to me. And we're going to be talking about that the entire show. Say like what? God <laughs> speaks to me. A direct people who are convinced they have a direct line of communication yeah. with God in a mental that. voice inside their heads. And we had a really interesting conversation about that. I want to delve into that a little bit and maybe talk about other examples we may have heard from <laughs> other people who may have told us the same thing. But before we get into all of those meat and potatoes, I'm going to throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs with our weekly invocation. Oh, he's changing his hats. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Our noodly lord, who art in a colander, of Dante be thy noodles. <laughs> thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum. With meat, as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we put up with those who cuss <laughs> against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles and the sauces and the grog, whenever and ever. Raw oh, man. man. <laughs> Red, you do weddings, right? You do weddings, right? Hold up. He had his headphone off. Dread, you do weddings, right? Yes. If I ever get married, I'm going to have to fly you down to, to a nice place in America so you can do our, our, our proceeding, right? Sounds but good. That's, that's too good. Hey, catching up on everybody, we're going to do a quick, you won't even manage it in how fast it is. This is going to be so quick, and then we'll get right on the topic. You won't believe how quick this thing will be. How's everybody doing? We'll start off with our own Scott Williamson. You're putting out new music. I can't believe how much I've been learning about since in the last couple of days. I'm learning about phase controls and stuff like that. The Ooh. idea of sound. I'm overwhelmed. There's just too many good options right now. And uh, maybe I can ask this. How did you get into music? How did you get into your music? Maybe that's probably the a good way. For oh, you. wow. So my family was um, always in the music. My brother was a lead singer for a really popular group in the 70s and 80s called Atlanta Rhythm Section. Nice. He was the uh, lead singer for their tours through the 80s and 90s. And then, um, of course, my sister sang, too. She sings blues. And she's actually going on a tour starting October to wow. promote her albums nice. and stuff. And, it's in the whole yeah, family. Yeah, so she, she, yeah they, they tour all around the world. They live the life. I'm not so lucky. Um, but that's how I got into music. But my interests went another way because I, I grew up. You know, uh, unlike my brother, I grew up in the 80s uh, in the, when I started getting interested in music. So the really thing that hit me was the whole rap mo movement, sure. hip hop and yeah. electronic music and all of that kind of yep. stuff. And mm. yeah, so that's where I came really interested in it, became a DJ from that. You know, I DJed in clubs <laughs> all over the place and then wanted to produce my own records, my own electronic records and hip hop records and what have you. And moved to Europe and did just that over there and then came back over here and do wow. it here. So that's how I got Well, You just said you stuff. never had the opportunity to go everywhere. And now you're just like, yeah, man, and then I went everywhere. And <laughs> well, I lived there. It wasn't really touring there. I was <laughs> actually living a few years as a lowly little peasant in Germany. 
hey that's awesome that's the place to be i can tell you my favorite thing about uh the quality of learning about synth music now is that i'm listening to music differently and it's not just mm -hmm. oh that probably came from a keyboard it's more of like oh that sounds like a sine wave but it's fatter right mm. and it like this choppy start that's almost a percussive little start and then it fades out to the end yeah, like I'm hearing yeah, it yeah, like, yeah that's how i that's how we listen to it yeah I'm like that's how could i read into that? right yeah I'm like how could yep. i make that if i had the opportunity to make that like i'm hearing mm -hmm. music way differently now it's great all right uh george brown i'm so happy to see you how you been you're not Thank lagging you. you're on the top of the elect uh uh technical electronic spectrum like i you're standing on like the master class <laughs> of silicon valley right now how are you coming in? Well, I'm, well uh, I'm living in the, on the edge here, um, running Linux as my operating system on my computers. Nice. And th that is living on the edge for me. That is on the edge. Li li Linux not being corporate is a tower of Babel. And um, I won't get into a lot of detail about this, but it's... It's really a, like learning Linux for me is, is like holding onto my chair and, you know, holding onto a bucking horse. So anyway, it's it's an adventure. Anyway, um, yeah. I just I wanted to say, that. you know, in, in response to what what Scott just said, you, you asked him how he got into music. And I just want to restate what I said last week in a different way that my mother, at, when I was six years old, my mother gave me a choice. You can have music or you can have religion. Right. What, you know, and I said, what kind of choice is that? So That's I, a fantastic I, choice. I, I studied music for the next 22 years. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that was George, the outcome of that. Speaking of, yeah. I see that Casio keyboard behind you. Have you started having more cracks at it? No, no, I haven't. That was the first instrument I played was piano. Mm. And I played it for a year. Um, and then I switched to woodwinds. Now I'm finding that I, I'm being drawn back to the keyboard as a desire. And I, so I have to go back to the very beginning, you know, take, take baby steps. Sure, I've always sure, wanted sure. a keyboard. Yeah. I've always wanted a keyboard and you know, this one just about dropped into my lap. It, it's an old one. I just want it to sound like a piano. Yeah. I mean, it, I does, it does all this stuff, but I just want to, you know, play piano. I started with keyboard myself and then I fell in love with guitar and now I just, I live in a room swamped with guitars and I, it's so easy for me to make music on it. But going back to piano is, I think about when I play guitar, I still think about it with a piano mentality, like in terms of how all the notes are yes. laid out and the chord structure. This like, make, yeah. Yeah. This makes a lot of sense to me, Tyrone. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, one of the things that I studied in college was music psychology. Ooh. And, that was a mind-blowing experience for me, you know, because um, I, I really feel that in conservatories, we should be teaching music psychology as the first option and then music theory after that. Interesting. It's, We're going to have to talk about that more. I'd love to know more about yeah, it. Yeah, it's, um, uh, you know, it's, it, it's like, it, it just keeps coming back to me over and over and over again. Speaking of things keep coming back to you over and over again, what about the tide of the high seas? Dread Pirate, can you tell us about that? I can what, indeed. What's coming on the high seas with you, matey? Well, just recently, um, Australia, our, our sister church there, Tanya Watkins is the captain, and uh, she had just gone before the South Australian Commission. Um, just let me bring it up here. Um, the South, South Australian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. Um, I'm just going to read this little news item here, uh, which is uh, acronym is SACAT. Her case number 2019 SA 001521 filed by Australian citizen Tanya Watkins. And this is something we're going to be, um, we have a template letter now that uh, churches around the world will be submitting to their respective ambas Australian ambassadors or uh, Australian consulates uh, in support of their case. As a result of the case, SACAT decided to deny Tanya Watkins registration of a nonprofit Pastafarian religious organization on the grounds that Pastafarianism is allegedly a parody religion. This decision, as well as the basis for its adoption, caused some bewilderment 
in me uh, as a believing Pastafarian. Pastafarianism is a true religion recognized in many countries and having followers all over the world. How can a, rigid, how can a religion that is real in one country be a parody in another? How, in principle, can a religion be recognized as a parody? Faith in the Creator is a purely personal matter, and a person from the outside cannot assess the reality of personal religious beliefs. Right. This is precisely what is laid down in the principle of freedom of religion, without which a free democratic society is inconceivable. I ask you to assist in, uh, I ask you to assist in the reconsideration of the Tanya Watkins case and in the adoption of a decision on the registration of a non-profit Pastafarian religious organization in Australia. With all my heart, we wish you and all the Australian people happiness, peace, prosperity, and delicious and nutritious food. Ramen. Nice. Ramen. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're, we had a meeting of the International Pastafarian Captain's Conclave, which is the captains of all the churches around the world. Sure. Um, and so we, we've developed this, and we're going to be sending a, we're going to paste a, a little noodle, like maybe a little macaroni uh, on each letter and send them off to our consulates and uh, try and get it done. Man, how, no, there's a thought instead of in terms of religious iconography instead of the uh crucifix which in my opinion is just offensive even if jesus came down and be like don't you know i hate those don't you know i really really hate those i hate those I hate... none of yeah. you guys are coming with that me. brings back bad memories yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, where are the atheists at? you guys aren't wearing those things you're with me guys no. why not just like a little macaroni around the neck yeah. and i'd be like oh that's pretty good that's pretty good yeah. Anyway, yeah, sure. best of luck. You're fighting the good fight, jo uh, Dread Pirate. I want you to keep it up. Dread Pirate, can you can you elaborate on that a little bit? Uh, give, give us some uh, an overview of the case that's going on in Australia. Well, in Australia, it works a little differently than it does here in in Canada. Like for yeah, it's instance, upside down. we we have it's the down. <laughs> it's upside down. And they don't exactly. apologize, and, and the water goes the other way. It's, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> um, so here in BC, uh, like my, my our church is a registered society under the Societies Act in British Columbia, uh, and as long as you meet the criteria, it doesn't matter what you do, um, as long as you know it's not about hate mongering or um, you know, um, you know, molesting children or whatever. You know, it's uh, it's you're good to go. In Australia, it's a different, uh, clearly a different thing, and. And so in Aust South Australia, it actually, you have to go before like a commission who then, you know, looks over your uh, application and then decides whether it merits um, recognition as a not-for-profit organization, uh, re religious or not. Um, and so this is, this is the decision that came down, uh, which she's uh, now, um, well, which we need to support her in, so. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting because, uh, you know, uh, so a couple of the members of the uh, IPCC who were on with me yesterday, uh, the head of the uh, Taiwanese church, so they're recognized in Taiwan. Um, Taiwan, you are so with it. They, they are. They just legalized gay marriage like earlier this year too. They, you, you guys got something good going on. Though. <laughs> and Russia. Uh, Russia's and Russia. Russia has got a registered church. Could so, not have, could it? you know, there you go. And, and of course, in Canada, we don't. So uh, while we all shake our fist at Putin for messing with democracy. Putin's guess still what? bad. Putin's still guess bad. What? Putin, yeah, Putin's yes. still bad. But Putin's still hey, bad, even but... bad people can do good things, right? Yeah. That's right, exactly. Even a broken watch is right <laughs> twice a day. Huh? That's right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Where can we find out more about this, Dread Pirate? Is there a link or uh, a Google um, what, search that we can look up? Yeah, you, you could probably just go to uh, www.venganza.org. Uh, no, That's... you're going to have to give us the Google search. No one's going to type that in. I can't, I've already... www. Well... Dot, no one ever does that. No one does that. How... Well, hey, hey you... just type in, type in Flying Spaghetti Monster, and you'll get all the links. Perfect. Fantastic. Yes. Okay, cool. Right. Doubter 5, listen, I've been playing disc golf. I've been working on my swings. I just did my first 300-foot throw yesterday wow. last night and i'm feeling really I, I good you even do that oh man imagine throwing a rock 300 feet that's that's mm -hmm. crazy but to do it with the disc it takes a while most people can do like pros can do like 600 but like to be able to make it that 
milestone. I'm happy, and I've only been doing. Well, it I, don't, I don't like to brag, but uh, talk to me. In, talk to me. In, uh, in golf, you can hit a ball 300 yards. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good There's point. That. Stage. Touché. There's that. How you been, my but friend? But you do have to get your hips into it. <laughs> oh yeah, you do have to get your hips. Hips are the, hips are the key. How have you been, my friend? Mm. Uh, this week I've been kind of sick. I'm still a little under the weather. Uh, mm. I think it's a summer cold. I don't have any temperature or anything, uh, but it, you might tell it in my voice. It's a little low, even for me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I'm I'm getting along. I hope it just lasts the regular time and goes away. So we'll see. Yeah, isn't it better that it's not COVID though? Is it, I mean, oh, that, I hope it's not the variant or anything like that. No, but, no, 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 no. But like you, you already got vaccinated. You're good. I'm glad. Right. Like when I, well, you I can felt, still get the variant if you vaccinated. Ab- well, I, I mean, we can talk about that later. But like, I felt a little sick today, and it was just good to feel ill without the concern of, oh my gosh, is this it? Is this it? Is this what's right. happening right now? Do I have right. to start calling work and vaccinating for the next two weeks? Dread, what's up? I, I just wanted to make a point there about the variant. Um, uh, one thing that uh, some people don't understand is that, say you have Moderna or Pfizer and you're 95% uh, resistant or immune, whatever, or vaccinated, you know, it's still, you were, previously you were only 1% likely to get it. So now it's 5% of the 1%. So it's, it's not like mm-hmm. you're 5% likely to get the variant. It's your 5% of 1%. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's so very slim. Very, very helpful. Very, very helpful to still get vaccinated. All right, guys, you know what else is really helpful is talking to God through my brain with the direct connection to the supreme, all-powerful being. Guys, you wouldn't believe I actually went over and played some disc golf with my friend. Uh, we did nine holes together. I had two over par at the end of nine holes. As a beginner, that's pretty good. That means you did the whole course and you only have to throw two extra putts. That's pretty, pretty good. Uh, yeah. He got plus eight. I'm just, I'm going to n- n- elbow him a little bit. He got plus eight. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I got a pretty good score. We go out to uh, McAllister's, which is a deli, and uh, we have a conversation and we're just talking. And I'm trying not to make the conversation about something religious. So I'm talking about literally anything else. Yet this guy keeps going to philosophy and then religion and then the one true base of, of all truths to base all of morality on. I'm like, I'm going to have to tackle this. It's going to have to be a thing. So I pull up my phone and ask, may I record this conversation? And he's like, yeah, sure, of course. I'd love to talk about this. And I'm like, great. And so I put on my Socratic examination hat, and we're going to start to talk about how he knows for sure that the base of all morality is given to us by God. And his answer was very straightforward. My God talks to me, he says. Like, my God speaks to me, and that's how I know what's true and what's not true and what's moral and what's not moral. It's like, I had that direct connection with God. And I was like, this is fascinating because, you know, I can't tell you how many churches we drove past just to get from this golf park up to the deli. And how amazing would it be if we could figure out a way to be like, actually, it's this one God. He's talking to this person. Watch, we'll roll four dice Mm -hmm. and the God will tell him what the dices will be before you even roll it and boom, 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 perfect. And we can test this as many times as you want. And yet God can tell him what his name is and we can put him on a lie detector, MRI. We can make sure that this is the guy and this is the God and we can save ourselves so much frustration and confusion among all these different denominations. We can finally get pasta and wear their hats <laughs> if the God wants it or whatever. But we'll know which book is the right book, which God is the right God and everybody will be so happy and think of all the wars they'll stop as a result of this. This guy, this guy sitting me in front of the, in front of the deli is the key to answering all of humanity's problems, at least on a religious front right now right here and i'm like i know you're a great guy this is awesome how how would you like to just test this out for like 15 minutes we can just do it right now maybe this because i'm a scientist you're a scientist let's do it his response well i don't want to test it (laughs) (laughs) who am i to test the voice to ask it to do something for me and i'm like why would you want not want to test it what is the harm that can come from testing something that's true because at the end of the day, you just have more veracity that it is in fact true. Only lies, in my opinion, are afraid 
of being tested. The truth wants to be verified. The truth is there to be tested and rigorously so. Lies don't mm-hmm. want to be tested. Lies have, well, not today. Not I'll, I'll call you back. My Canadian girlfriend uh, is on the phone with me and I'll come back. Dread part, you may not know this, but there's a stereotype in America where you say Canadian girlfriend as like, yeah, that's not a real girlfriend. Uh, you... <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> anyway, yeah. And my, I have a girlfriend, but she lives in Canada. It's like, yeah, you don't have a girlfriend. It's okay. Uh, well, Doubter Five, I'd love for you to, to weigh in on this. The idea of God speaks to you, why wouldn't someone want to test that if they have the, a direct voice in their head? Well, it's built into the religion, having been a, a Christian um, growing up, that you can't test God. You don't test God. Uh, and now that we're atheists, we understand why they say that, because yeah. there's no test that will prove that God exists. So we don't test him. Mm. Uh, what gets me, I'd like to make two points, is what do they, how do they know the, that the voice that they hear in their head is God? They believe in a worldview that has several entities that could also put a voice in their head. Yep. Angels, um, the devil, a soul, somebody else's soul, Demons. Satan. It yep. could be any of those. Uh, you know, how does he? How does he identify the voice of God? Two. Can you imagine how dangerous it is for you, for you to believe that anything that happens to pop into your head is the voice of God? <laughs> I mean, you cannot disobey on, on the threat of hell. So you have to do anything that pops into your head. It's just, it's just very dangerous situation for you. Rob a bank. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill your crazy. son. Oh, uh, that's so, yeah, there are some horror stories that are true of like, you know, moms actually doing that to the kids because yeah. they, yeah. they had a psychosis where they believe. Yeah. But even Abraham, you yeah. know. And yeah, and I wouldn't say he's the poster child of good mental health either or good parenting. Oh. But as far as God goes, like if we're comparing, if we're comparing Abraham to God, Abraham, not as bad of a dad. <laughs> surprising, all things surprising, right? Yeah. Scott, I'd love to get your feedback. The idea of God speaks to me. Have you ever spoken to anybody like that? And as a Jehovah Witness, did you ever have a similar experience? Um, well, Jehovah's Witnesses um, don't believe that there's that those kind of experiences are possible, mm. that those are from the devil, mm. because the Bible is the uh, special revelation from Jehovah, and that was enough. Um, so for them, their belief system is, you know, these people that tell you they speak to God, they're just of the devil. Ignore them. Um, but as for say like, um, evangelicals and a lot of people like that, that say they speak to God is quite common, but, um, uh, it's always weird to me. Why does God, when you hear about people, um, talking about God spoke to me, he's always telling them to go kill somebody or do something bad. Oh, Why doesn't he ever tell them to go pay their taxes, know, Yeah, pay your taxes or go <laughs> stop telling people that evolution is a religion go outside and pick up some trash you know right and something, <laughs> something nice <laughs> something nice yeah. go buy go, go buy your mom some flowers it doesn't have to be a uh, yeah get some flowers. Get some flowers. <laughs> i'm like oh thanks god <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or you know in a weird way i know this sounds really silly but um mm. we tend to associate um hunches or gut feelings and put voices on them ourselves it's just as easy for us to misconstrue that we are talking to ourselves than it, is, than it would be for, I imagine, for like the devil to actually be talking to you rather than God. And I feel like even when I'm sitting down in a room, I hear my voices talking to myself. I hear my left brain talking to my right brain. And it's like, I want to, I want to, I literally, for right now, I literally want to get my tax, uh, well, not my tax, my passport form renewed so i can renew my passport and my other brain's like i want to draw can we draw instead it's like oh but we got to do the passport stuff no we, i, I want to make music right now it's like oh geez i I'll, I'll i'll do 15 minutes of each guys everyone calm down <laughs> dread have you ever had i'm gonna ask this have you ever had an internal dialogue in your head that uh kind of surprised you and um does it seem likely that someone can have an experience like that and associate it if they come from a, a climate where there is a god belief associate that with a god speaking to them hmm. Well, I can't say that I've ever had an internal dialogue that surprised me Mm. because certainly all the information I have access to, I know about. Interesting. It's not like 
you know, it's not like there's some hidden compartment um, that, you know, I stumbled upon and opened up and went, oh, geez, What's I that have that, that knowledge. I know how to speak Latin. Wow, <laughs> great, you know, but no, I, I mean, it, when we talk about to people hearing voices, <laughs> I mean, you know, schizophrenia, of course, is characterized uh, by the hearing of voices or that sort of dissociated of a, a conversation that happens with what they don't recognize is themselves, mm. right? It's the sort of the externalization mm. of that internal dialogue. Um, so, you know, it's, I mean, uh, the DSM has a pretty good definition of what that's all about. So, yep. um, yeah, I, I don't, oh, you, I would not trust anyone uh, to be um, confident in any way that uh, conversation they're having with God is uh, something um, could even be real. How would all you the even... voices are in our own heads. I'm going to, I'm going to throw this question out to George Brown. You are, you are the untainted atheist in my head. Everyone's born an atheist and you eventually are convinced that a God's true. If you, depending on who your parents are or what place in the world you're living in, you never had that choice. You had that, you had the choice actually, but you chose music. You, you had, you were left or right and you went, you went down the music trail and I'm wondering, yeah. you know, Sometimes you might be listening to Bach and you might have like a, what some people would refer to as a spiritual experience where you just feel so overwhelmed. And if there was a, um, you know, if there was a voice behind that, that was like, George, I'm God, keep doing what you're doing, bro. You're all right. Like if you heard something like that, right. How would you feel? And how would you even know like, uh, who it was would you do you feel like you have an awareness to know what if, if god wanted to do talk to you with through a voice would you be able to actually recognize it as an how organ? can i answer you how can i answer you concisely Take i will your try oh, I'm a, how are I we on try. time larry how are we on time just want to make sure yeah uh oh you're um, on my friend I wish that I had a, a God that said that to me. Mm, that would me be too. very nice, you know. It would be comforting to, to have God tell me this, but God has not deigned to condescend <laughs> to speak to me in this way. Um, now, I, I have known a, a woman who was schizophrenic, and I admire her frankly, um, because of her challenges that she has had to deal with to live in reality, having these voices come at her constantly. Mm, mm. And so uh, she has raised a child and, you know, done her best to be a good parent to this child, having these voices coming at her all the time. Right. And so what she has chosen to do now, she's an old woman now, is to take medicine, you know, to take these d different medicines that stop the voices in her head. Wow. But these, these medicines have a horrible physical uh, co uh, consequence that she has to then live with, mm -hmm. and she does. So um, she was the lesser of two evils, eh? Yeah, she put up with that. Yeah. Just so she would take pills and make her sick, just so she it doesn't have to do with the sickness she currently has. That's mm -hmm. yes, that's yes. Funny. You know, and 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 she's told me the the side effects, and they're so horrible. Um, you know, I just I, I have to extend my my deepest sympathy and respect to her. So, but but on the other hand, I was just looking up trying to find this fellow named Baruch Goldstein, oh. who uh, God told him to slaughter a whole bunch of people in Israel a few years ago. So he did. Oh, my God. He followed. He, he did what God told him to do. Yeah, and of course, the people... holds up in court. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was no there was no court. court. There, there was no court because the other parishioners beat the bloody hell out of him oh, no. right <laughs> after that. And, and they killed him. So wow. <laughs> guys, on that note, how about this? A little touch of justice. We'll take a break. We'll come right back and we'll go yep. to uh, Scott with some feedback. Okay. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM WOZO Radio, Knoxville. 
Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dowder Five, and we're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, June 27, 2021. Now let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and we have weekly Zoom meetings during COVID, but we are also, again, starting to meet in person. And that would be at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria in Knoxville's Old City, out on the patio. Uh, come down there Tuesday evenings after work, say 5.30 until about 8. You can find us also online on Facebook, meetup.com, or knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Um, by the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and look for a atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. Start one. That's right. Well, I'm back where we want to pick up. So we were talking about the proper way to drive a disc golf. So you really do want to make sure you get your hips engaged, that you plant your foot down, and you transfer that momentum down the, the length of your chest like this. I'm doing this movement, and Scott's going to give us all the feedback on it. Scott, make what sure you your feet are on the ground. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No standing splits yeah. while, you, while you drive a disc golf. Scott, well, we were, what we were talking about was uh, – uh, nature of different God beliefs and, and essentially like speaking, having a God speak to you. And we were talking about like, is this a kind of psychosis perhaps? And, and George opened up with a story about a friend of his who was um, dealing with schizophrenia and taking medicines to mm -hmm. deal with it. Uh, I saw you wanted to have a comment on it. What's up? Yeah, that's right. Um, I think it's very important when we talk to people that say they've had these religious experience or mystical experiences or speaking to God kind of uh, scenarios to understand that the brain is a very powerful and mysterious thing. And so it's it you have to give them a little slack that it, this is compelling to them. They can really feel that this experience is real and they can very easily misattribute it. An example that I wanted to give you just to kind of illustrate just how weird and powerful the brain can be. This is like a real life um, uh, scenario back in 2015. There was a German lady, she's a 37 year old German woman who suffered a traumatic accident as a young woman and the doctors diagnosed her with cortical blindness caused by damage to the visual processing centers in her brain, said she wow. would never be able to see again. Wow. Uh, she was totally in the dark. She needed a seeing eye dog to guide her. And she grew accustomed to that, you know, dark life for years, for like decades, right? But then she started to come down uh, with um, a mental disorder called um, disassociated, disassociative identity disorder. And, you know, this thing caused her, one of her, they call alters or personalities, was able to see. Get out of was town. Was able to, yeah, was a, didn't need the seeing eye dog, was able to describe everything perfect. They put her in an MRI. They said that her brain lit up, that she was actually seeing things and, and it restored. And the doctors were just amazed, didn't understand how this could even be possible. And of course, that um, this is a really well-known case at this point um, wow. in that area. But that just kind of lets you know just how powerful the mind can be and how compelling it can be. A person like that, imagine, or what if a person like that attributed it to God, how convinced yeah. they would be? Absolutely. Because that I mean, what other explanation is going to provide evidence for uh, you not said, being a god i mean it's you, weird you said the damage was to the brain but not to the the optics is that what you're saying yeah just to her cortical yeah. uh brain uh, damage yeah the, i think the brain has a capability of uh regrowing certain areas or re you know rep, repeating certain areas and other areas you know if they, they get damaged and that may very well have been what happened mm -hmm. uh, in that you know it created another site center as it were. Yeah. And, and then but the funny the, thing is when she goes back to any of her other altars or personalities, she's blind again. Hmm. Only on that one altar. Get out of town. To How bizarre is that? Wow. That's so wow. strange. George, I'd love to hear what you got to say on this. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, man. Hey, I'll tell you this. Oh, gee. Wait, I know uh, people, yeah. people who've had lobotomies 
And we know that um, oh, there are memory mm-hmm. components and motor functions that are related to the brain in, in certain areas. And if you cut them out, oh my gosh, there's a recovery period. And yet a lot of people, even people who have complete half of their brains taken out, develop the motor mm. functions on the other arm again and can still remember things that happened in the past that would normally be associated with that side of the brain. And it, that was that was not one of the first times scientists have re, uh, re- recorded that, but it was also more proof that a lot of the memories that we have are just our brains coming up with this really great video editing software and being like, okay, so what do you want to wear? A red t-shirt? Okay, sure. Uh, birthday candle with five... Uh, candles or birthday cake with five candles got it good all right everybody's here no wait too many people let's let's take them out lights camera action guys and that's your memories like a lot of your memories are essentially just reconstructions that your brain is doing with the sense of confidence that oh and this is what happened and that was when i read that that was kind of like shaking but your brain can compensate and and can do it for motor yes indeed um i was going to say the the woman i was talking about um one thing that she's been able to do is to recognize the, let's say, the real voices from the fake voices. And she talks back to the fake voices. You know, I know you're not real kind of thing. Wow. And somehow she's managed to get through her life. She's managed to navigate through, the, through this, this mental chaos. Good. She talks back you know, to the voices. In she way, talks back to the voices, but she, she, the thing is that, that she, she can recognize the, the falseness of those voices. Mm-hmm. Now, if, if the people who hear God in their head <laughs> could do the same thing, I think we'd be, we'd be okay. <laughs> because, Talk back know, to the God voice. Baruch, like, hey, who are Baruch you? Baruch 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 Goldstein. <laughs> You're not real. Yeah, Show me your ID Baruch card. Baruch Goldstein, he would not have killed all those people in yeah. Israel. You know, it's like... Mm-hmm. Solve this so, math so equation what? for me. Hey, how about that? Now, here's what if it's the, like the next time you get talked to a god, it's like solve this math problem for me first, and then I will do what why you tell do me pe- to do. And if they why solve it, why do people right, trust? Why do people trust a man of the cloth who says he hears God as opposed to themselves hearing God? Because they demonstrate mm-hmm. themselves as an authority figure, and people love authority mm-hmm. figures. That's all there is to it. Also, when you mm-hmm. speak like this, and very clearly and very calmly. People pay attention to you. That's it. Dread Pirate, what do you got? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if I heard a voice in my head that said it was God, I would ask him how much change I have in my pocket. Oh. <laughs> he, hey. if, he could figure, if, if the voice came back and said, and I didn't know, yes. it would be like the, the thing being surprised that, right. by uh, but if knowledge. You did right? know, but, if I yeah. didn't know how much change was in my pocket, and he could tell me, well, oh, we got three quarters, four knickers, two loonies, and two toonies. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. you know. I'd be yeah. a little more inclined to think there's something to it. No, I think you're um, absolutely onto something really great here. Like there should just be a preliminary question that you ask the voices that you aren't familiar with before they tell you. I'd rather go with like. a, a lottery number. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so um, I, I did, I, br- I brought up this uh, case here and oh the, the person was named the BT, uh, the gal in tw- the German mm-hmm. in 2015. So her blindness mm-hmm. was uh, what they call, a psychogenic blindness. So it wasn't mm-hmm. something done to her, her visual cortex or her optic nerve or her eyes. Um, it was a what they call a psychogenic blindness is a type of conversion disorder, a physical condition that cannot be explained by physical damage. And so um, it wasn't about uh, her brain compensating with other mm. regions of the brain in order mm. to help her see, but just that the you know the division of her, her personality into these different personalities um just allowed some of them to access it mm-hmm. and others not so it was still based imagine. on a traumatic a traumatic uh, uh instance yeah. that this all started to uh, develop and imagine a person who doesn't understand that like a person who's experiencing the blindness who doesn't yeah. understand what's really mm-hmm. going all they know is they're blind yep, and right. they're blind all their life or most of their life then all of a sudden they have this this associative ID that can see it. Mm-hmm. That would be fascinating toward to the person. So I guess for sure, imagine a person who hears the voice of God. Mm-hmm. It's kind of similar to that. Mm-hmm. Their brain is doing something that they don't understand or have no knowledge of. All they know is I'm hearing this voice. 
it's sure. compelling yep. as heck. And so I know God exists. So you can kind of understand the logic there, I guess. Yeah. I can tell you this. We spoke about this in the past. Uh, I have voices in my mind that help encourage me to do things that I know are in fact very hard that feel like I'm being coached through like either hard workouts or focusing during tests or being able to stay calm in situations where I can feel my panic or anxiety go up. I have like a voice that assures me, uh, encourages me. And, and as long as I have voices like that, with that kind of tone, I'm totally fine with them. And I talk back mm -hmm. to them too sometimes, but I can also tell you this dread. I also have voices in my head that legitimately make me laugh. Like they, they, <laughs> they know the rules of comedy and they can give me sort of like an expectation and then subvert it in such a way uh. where I'm like, <laughs> that was funny. What are you thinking about Ty? Uh, I don't yeah. want to talk about it. It's like, yeah, run them like, down, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's going on there? What's going on with that Ty? It's like, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. It was just a really funny thing. Just, you just randomly started laughing one day. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If they, my voice is in my head. If so, like, I understand that there's a lot of, um, you know, schizophrenia is a real disease. Um, um, paranoia is a real disease. Like there are things that come with having voices in your head that you can't control that are very taxing, exhausting. However, if you are fortunate enough to have positive voices in your head that you can put like a mute button on or do not disturb button on. And maybe sometimes when you, like, even when you forget about them, they, they come back and make you laugh every now and then that's in my opinion, uh, like a wonderful thing to have, but demonstration that the, the mechanics are still there for everybody. And it's just whether or not you have the mental health to have supportive voices or uncontrollable um, crazy voices that are mean or hostile to you. Like mm. it's still the same thing. It's the same tools, but it's a completely different tone. It's a question of how you can control that. Um, Doubter five, what can someone who is encouraged to, or what can someone who knows that the voices in their head um, may not necessarily be God do to actually confirm that. And I, I don't mean that in so much of like, what kind of tests can they run? I mean, more of like, how can they prepare themselves to, to realize that it's actually not the God belief if they already have an inclining belief that like they have that starting to have enough doubt to be like, uh, well, you know, if I sit down and flip a coin 10 times, maybe the voice won't talk to me, but maybe I was wrong just because the voice didn't want to talk. To well, me. like what can they I do mean, to like get playing the, the lottery? And, and it, I mean, guys, if, if the, you think that the voice might be God, you know, he should know everything. Ask him some questions. Uh, ask some questions that physicists are uh, dealing with yeah. uh, problems of physics. Um, thing about it is, help real help is out there. See a professional. You know, go to a psychologist. Uh, mm. Schedule some therapy time. To, uh, discuss it with them. Tell them what's going on, and, and see if you can get a real valuable medical um, uh, result out of it. Hey, that's not bad. And if they say there's not a problem and it actually is God, maybe then you, you can be more confident. <laughs> but otherwise, well, but they what? surprise you some pills. Maybe you should take them. <laughs> I did want to go to Dredd because he raised his hand. Uh, Dredd, what's up? Well, uh, just one of our viewers here on the live stream, uh, Dada's Trading Room. He says, I have an internal dialogue, even can do it in two languages. But, I, but he doesn't hear voices. Okay. Does he understand the other language? <laughs> <laughs> George, we'll go see, ahead. We'll see how he responds. Dada, thank it's you for the comment. Yeah. George, what's up? Um, I'm, again, I've forgotten what I was going to say. You will remember it in 30 <laughs> seconds flat. I'll throw this out as a fun thing. Yeah. My mom is hard of hearing, uh, our, uh, respecting her privacy. Uh, she does have for a period of time, an internal sign, which is not like you hear it. It's a nonverbal communication. And, um, if you practice ASL enough or American sign language enough that you, you will develop, uh, cases where you are thinking and signs and not so much with words or, or text. It's like, I feel the signs that I need to make in order to convey this expression that I'm trying to make. And it's a, it's a very interesting thing. George, anything you want to add? You... Well, I, I'll, I'll comment on, I'll comment on Go for it, go that. for it. I, go was, for it. I, I was once in, in, in a room that, that had a few, a few um, uh, deaf people and they were telling jokes to each other and laughing. Oh, that's great. And, and I wasn't in on it, you know, because I didn't know the sign language. 
um yeah i've been in a room with that was... people who are yelling at each other and i was just like really <laughs> very awkwardly quiet and it's just two people like from across the room and i was just like oh no what's going on yeah. here can we just all get along with each other calm down guys be quiet it's like no you're already as quiet as you can get okay all right so listen guys we're at McAllister's. We had that conversation with, hey, why don't you test it? I know you're a good guy. This definitely resolve a lot of conflict, resolve wars, solve potentially a lot of humanity's problems. And he said, well, I didn't want to test it. And I, and I gave him that whole spiel. And I think at the end of it, in fact, we recorded it, so I don't have to guess. But he said, you know, I really just feel like I'm afraid to test it because there's a choice. There's a chance that if I do test it and it doesn't work, then I'll know that it's not God. And, and that would be, you know, a life-changing recognition for me. And maybe that's why I'm afraid to mm. test it. And um, mm. I'm like, that, what, well, you know, like I let him sit on that. I didn't like really add anything else after that. But in my head, I feel like that's the root of the issue. Because if you were to take a, what's the simple, not the simplest approach, but what approach leads to the least number of assumptions is it a he's actually being spoken to by the divine supernatural being that created the entire universe that only speaks to him at certain times and doesn't want to be tested despite the fact that he's having a one-on-one -on -one communication <laughs> with one of his subjects mm. or maybe he was just raised as a christian and is afraid to test the grounds of his upbringing really in a sense because that will make him leave to ask a lot of uncomfortable questions about the nature of the universe and what would happen to him after he dies um if anything mm -hmm. And uh, it seems that the least assumptive path is the one where it's just based on fear and an unwillingness to ask critical questions, which tends to be the case for a lot of these mysteries, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was an hour and a half long conversation. I didn't push it any further than that. But uh, how would you guys, I'll ask this, we'll do a quick round table. Dread, if you got to that point in the conversation, would there be anything else that you would ask at the end of that? And how would you go from there? Well, you know, I would probably, uh, you know, just ask the person to reflect or if they were willing to reflect and then, and then maybe we could have another conversation in a week or so. Man, that's you great. Know? I should have asked that. Yeah. That was, that was wonderful. Because, yeah, it, I mean, because you, <clears throat> that, I mean, that kind of subject, you really have to grok it. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, takes, You're gonna have to explain take, that. I know takes, it's a possiferian term, maybe grok. No, no, no. no. Grok, grok is from uh, Robert Robert A. Heinlein's *Stranger in a Strange Land*. Right. Ah, okay. Uh, ah. Classic science fiction. Uh, anyway, groking is a term that kind of embodies a sense of understanding, but so much more deeply. Mm. Um, so, you know, on big, on big questions of philosophy and whatnot, I, I tend to use the word grok, uh, for trying to really absorb uh, a concept or, or really try to, you know, get your work head it around out. it. Nice. Head around I love it, that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love it. So, okay. so okay. like I say, so, um, um, you know, I would uh, encourage that person then to, to, to grok it for a while and then, and then come back and see what they had to say. That's really good. The invitation to come back. I mm -hmm. think is a really good touch. Um, I will work on that. Scott, what would you recommend? That was a great question you just asked because I asked um, Anthony Magna Bosco the same question um, regarding that um, in my interview with him a few weeks ago. And he told me that probably from the outset of the conversation, the first thing you want to know is, are they interested in knowing the truth or not? Mm -hmm. Are they more interested in the truth or are they more interested in their beliefs? And if you can get them to say, well, no, I, I want to know the truth, then at that point, you kind of have license to um, talk about, you know, kind of explore why then do you not want to test it? You said that you want to know the truth and how are you going to, what method are you going to use to get to the truth of this? And um, because if you don't want to test it, then it seems like what you're saying, we you know you don't have to say this, but it just seems like what they're saying is they don't really want the truth. They want their belief. They want right. their belief. You know, I did ask that plainly. I was asking like, hey, is, are, do you want your beliefs to be true? And mm -hmm. he was like, what do you mean? It's like, do you want like everything in this holy book, the, the Bible to be true? And he's like, well, I just know they're true. I don't think whether I want them or not is a factor. I'm like, so you don't know if you want this to be true. It's like, I just don't think it's an important point. And I'm like, how bizarre is it that 
there's a Christian who doesn't want the tenets in the Bible to be true. Like how mm. <laughs> I've never heard of a, such right. a thing before. It's like, okay, well, yeah, yeah. I want them to be true. It's like, you want them to be true. Like that would make sense to me. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's like, okay, well, I feel like there's clearly some bias then if there was conflicting opinions or conflicting facts, if you have a desire for something to be true, you know, from a scientific perspective, you have hypotheses, but you're not married to the hypothesis. It's just a, I need to set up a test and we'll figure out if it fits or if it doesn't fit, but I'm not committed to either one. I'm going to try to test as objectively as possible. But if I want something to be true and I am faced with evidence or facts that it's not true, I might due to my ego or bias, try mm -hmm. to ignore those or look for more information yeah, confirmation it's bias it's confirmation bias at, at the end of the day yeah. right. doubter five you have a more argumentative approach but you also you you got your nice hearty moments if you got to the point where he's uh, uh, a guy who believes he's talking to a god admits that maybe i'm just afraid to find out that i'm wrong how would you go from there i don't know i mean if he's afraid and he admits that he's afraid all you can do is accept what he says and move on, I guess. Uh, just tell him, keep an open mind. But uh, if it's, if I, I might mention the things that I mentioned earlier about how dangerous it is, dangerous it is to think that you have the voice of, voice of God in your head. Hey, that's not bad. You know, I, but uh, after that, you know, it's, it's up to him, I guess. Yeah, how about this? And next time God tells you to do something and involves hurting somebody, call me. Yeah, and right. talk about it first about that, right. and mm -hmm. and take some time to grok it, and we can come back to it at a later <laughs> date for sure. Okay. George Brown, does this whole conversation sound incredibly foreign to you or alien to you? Like, it does, it does, and it doesn't, um, because uh, now you you all know that I live in in the Bible Belt here, and and. As a person who's spent most of my life living on the coasts, you know, by, by the ocean, one one place or another, um, be, being here in the Bible Belt is, is kind of a shock. It's it's taken me a long time to to acclimate to to the prevailing winds of reality that are unreal around me. So. Uh, you know, there are, there are places around here that have signs that say the truth shall set you free. Mm. And that's not my truth. That's somebody else's truth. And, you know, the, so there's the question, can we even have a dialogue? Can we even have a dialogue? Well, we can definitely try. Yeah. Yeah. And we're here in, in, in a country where this is a democracy, you know, and we affect each other with our beliefs at yep. the voting booth. Yep. And, and so there are real consequences to what people uh, believe. And, and um, I don't have an answer. I'm yeah. stumped. I also feel like there's a um, responsibility for the diet of information that you allow it to ingest. And a lot of that comes with like cable news as your means with informing yourself or, <laughs> you know, taking a bit more responsibility and trying to find better cited news sources or opinions or and stuff like that or being able to parse opinion and entertainment from factual sets of dates and stuff but it's and the inter the internet is is loaded with websites oh, that yeah. have very slanted information on oh them. yeah absolutely and there's always an agenda so you have to be able to see like where's that agenda and where can i lie with it and then Ultimately, what's the most important thing for us to be able to do as a country? Because democracy, if we ain't learned anything, is fragile and, and deserves to be yes. protected. So, and guys, is, our, is our atheism a yeah, religion, in fact? George Brown, I'm going to throw it out at you. Is there anything that you'd like to recommend that anybody check out before the end of, before, before this week, for this week? Would you recommend anything for this week? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, try to find wisdom within the belly of the monster. Ooh. You know, you can you can find wisdom in better places, but sure, why not? Why not? There's lots I of places. I want to find the monster in my belly. Yeah, I want to find the monster in my belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go to Walmart and find something. In other words... There. Go, go go in go into go into the the inner workings of the Catholic Church, for instance, and see if you can find some wisdom in there. I'll bet you can. You, know? you could, but I guarantee you, the same wisdom that's there is freely available in every other place you look for wisdom. And and that's, I, that's I've been reading. Case, why do you need the Catholic Church? I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 very fond of Sufi teaching stories. Sure, I find sure. a lot of a lot of old time wisdom in some of them. Sure. So, Doubter Five, 
what's up with you? I hope you feel better by next week. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I hope yeah. So. yeah. Uh, keep sniffling. Get all those germs out and, and crank it up and then feel better. Grok it. Put, <laughs> put a grok on it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, feel, I'm there too, but I'm hoping I can just uh, will myself back into normalcy. Uh, Scott Williamson, keep me updated on this on these sound engines and control box and synth waves and stuff like that. How, what's something that you'd recommend for us to check out before the end of next week? Yeah, just um, you know, my new record release came out uh, last week, so I put it up on my um, uh, dubshine.bandcamp.com site. Man, I put a lot of passion and oh yeah imagination into a lot of my music and i want people to check it out support me you know it costs us a few cents to download one that would make me feel awesome you know and i've been getting a lot of downloads and people commenting Fantastic. and things like that and contacting us. so i'm just really grateful for that just i encourage people to keep doing that that's like the engine <clears throat> for me you know to as uh, an keep doing it yep as an Give that name again, creator. would you? Uh, it's uh, dubshine.bandcamp.com. For online content creators, a little bit of love goes a long way. And sometimes that's just a good comment that's like, hey, I, saw, I listened to your stuff and it sounded good. If I got a comment like that mm -hmm. on the music that I got, I'd be like, wow, that's awesome. I'm still making the music for me. But it's so nice that there's other people who are into that and also enjoying that as well. And that just mm -hmm. is such a great motivator. So take some time, spread some love. And uh, on the things that you like, make sure you let the, the otters, artists or the creators know. Dread Pirate Higgs, I've been spending this entire day watching that little uh, plushy toy stare right back at me. <laughs> Our new little art. Yeah. What would you suggest that we check out before, the, uh, before next week? Okay, well, I've got a couple things. I mean, you can find uh, this live stream on Sundays uh, at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm also now the new Pastafarian um, correspondent for the Global Atheist News, cool. which is uh, produced through uh, Free Thought um, through uh, uh, John Richards. Uh, congrats on your uh, recent interview with him, Scott Williamson. That was, uh, that was good. You. Uh, and nice. good news here. Hey. Uh -huh. What are we looking at? It's blurry. What it's, are we looking it's, at? It's, it's blurry. kind of blurry. What's going well, on? On my, for, on my forehead. We've been following is, this story is, for three weeks, and is, you're going to pull this is, out when we only got one minute left in the show. With the the FSM. The you FSM. It's a tattoo. It's a tattoo. Uh, it, it, it's with the, fat, uh, with the flying spaghetti monster symbol on it. So that's official. So it is it's official. Yes. So it's the oh. wedge. It's the wedge into that uh, tiny, tiny crack they left open, <laughs> and I'm driving that baby on. Chaos! Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Great. I love it. All right, so yeah. now now you graduate the headband or something like that, because now That's it's just correct. like, you already that let me correct. do the tattoo. It's not like you got a thing. Now exactly. I got to come on, and yeah. and we start to think, man, if I lived there, like I said, I'd be right there next in line being like, you just let that guy with the tattoo do it. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly, exactly how it's going to work. <laughs> black? What are you doing? I'll make it uncomfortable for everybody there. Trust me. All right. So uh, check me out on Let's Chat. You can uh, see plenty of my videos and this show regular every week. And uh, thank you so much for listening. Daughter 5, why don't you uh, take us out? Right. Um, my own content is for, is found online at the Digital Free Thought Radio. I'm sorry, digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, my book is Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. If you have any questions for the show, please send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. If you're a member of clergy, a preacher, pastor, or priest, but no longer believe and the claims of religion, uh, you're no longer trapped. There is help for you at theclergyproject.org. That's theclergyproject.org. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life and say bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody. Bye. Ramen. Ramen. <laughs>